<laughs> if parenthood came with a GPS, it would most likely just say recalculating. Join Yulandi Becker and her guest experts Wednesdays at 11 a.m. for Bump and Beyond, the show about pregnancy and babies, 101.9 megahertz of life. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Or if you're like, we're listening to this later on the podcast, good day. <laughs> this is Bump and Beyond, and I am your host, Yulandi Becker. And as always, we are talking parenting. And today's parenting podcast and radio show is specifically about um, child safety or child passenger safety. Because if you haven't known because I didn't until recently, um, realized that it is actually September is Child pa Passenger Awareness Month. And in celebration of that, we are going to be a celebration. I don't know if we should be celebrating that. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to say happy passenger. It's way too much. Um, but it is important topic. And today we are talking specifically about that. And child car seats in specific. And you, as you know, if you've been listening to my show a lot, um, I am passionate about this topic. I am one of those really, really weird people who tell people while I'm on the road that, um, hey, your child's not in a safety seat. And then they often would refer to me and say, like, uh, but my child doesn't like to be put into the car seat. And then I will just comment they're also not going to like brain damage. Uh, <laughs> because that's the reality. It's a joke, but it's not a joke. It's funny because it's true. Road accidents are one of the biggest killers of children in South Africa, whether in a vehicle or as a pedestrian. Um, and some stats to scare you even more into listening to this conversation is that transport accidents are the leading accurately recorded cause of non-natural deaths in children under 14 in South Africa. According to the Road Traffic Management Corporation, last year, 100, no, 1,017 children died and 45,000 were hospitalized due to injuries sustained in road accidents. For many, their lives change irrevocably. The majority of car accidents happen close to home. One study shows that 52% within eight kilometers and 77% within 25 kilometers. So it's just up the road means nothing because that's where it happens. <laughs> Africa has 2% of the world's cars but 20% of the accidents and the deaths on the roads. Um, and 25% of car crashes in South Africa are actually directly associated with cell phone usage. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, hence why we are actually talking about that. The reality is that car seats could reduce child deaths by 71%. And injuries by 67% if it's always properly used. <laughs> so to kick off our, or not kick off, to add on to our discussion, as always, I have roped in the experts to help us on this conversation. So hello to Renee Grundy, a certified European car seat technician with a special interest in children with special needs and co-founder of the Car Seat Emporium. Hello, Renee. Hello, Yolandi and listeners. Thank you for having me. Yes. Renee, you might have to just move your phone a little bit either closer to you because there seems to be a little bit wind around you. <laughs> That's a little bit better. Yes, now I don't have that background noise anymore because if it's annoying me, it's annoying my listeners and Craig is watching me and showing me something's happening, but now it's much better. Hello, Renee. <laughs> I love you, Landy and listeners. Let's try again. Good yes. morning. Yes. Um, Thank you for having me. I am very excited about, like I said to you, I am one of those really idle people who is very passionate because I think, as I mentioned, we can significantly reduce deaths of children. Um, if we are more vigilant about what we are doing 
um, with regards to car seats. And we think, and I mean, you've, you're super passionate about this topic, so I can't wait for you to get started on it. But it is, it is so important because we're thinking, oh, I just buy a car seat and I'm sorted. And it's not as simple as that, unfortunately. So let's start off with starting at the start of this conversation, because another thing that you've taught me is the, the reality that our laws in South Africa are not necessarily, I mean, there are laws, but it's also not very strictly enforced. Okay. So let's start with what does the South African law stipulate with regards to car seats? Okay, so the South African law stipulates that a child under the age of three must be buckled up in an appropriate car seat. And after the age of three, buckled up in a car seat if one is available. If one is not available, they must just be buckled up with a vehicle seatbelt. So in other countries, it goes up that they need to be in a car seat up till the age of 12 years old or 1.5 meters tall. Mm. Because when, when you put a child of like four or five years old, any child actually under the age, under the um, height of 1.5 meters tall, don't get a correct vehicle seat belt fit. So the lab belt sits on their stomachs and during a car crash, it pushes right through the soft tissue onto their spine. And if the child survives, they usually have um, lifelong disabilities. So a lot of parents in South Africa make the mistake and they think when the child goes to grade one, which is about seven years old and about 25 kilograms, that they can ditch their car seats. They should actually start using and continue using it until they are 1.5 meters tall, which is roughly between the age of 10 and 12 when they reach that length. Oh. In order that they should be in a, in a booster in order to have a chance to survive a car crash. I mean, even I am sitting here, it's like, oh my word, luckily my kids are tall, so I'm pretty sure I got away with it a little bit longer, but I mean, that's the reality of it. Are you thinking, uh, because I also, my children sat at the back seat for a very long time, and every now and then, then they're like, oh, can I sit in the car, in the front seat, and they're older now. Is there a difference between sitting in front? When should your child be able to sit in the front? That's a very good question. So first of all, there's no law in South Africa that prohibits you of putting your child on the front seat. There's in other countries there is well, but not in South Africa. So you, the best and safest place that research has shown is in the back seat until they are 12 or 13 years old. So a very good milestone for your child is they go to grade eight, which is high school, in the year that they usually turn about 13, is only from Zing that they can start using the front passenger seat with an active airbag in front of them. Okay, my kids are not going to be impressed with me, but I'm fine with that. They're often not impressed with me. But in the end of the day, these are the type of things, and like I said, I'm ignorant about it. And I feel like I'm, and I've said this also many times on the show, I am, I feel sometimes overly informed um, in my situation because I deal with parenting and these type of things all the time. So if I don't even know, I'm very confident that most parents are not going to be knowing this. But I am I can't wait to get more into details because I've got a lot of questions to still ask. More about this just now. This is Bump and Beyond with Yolandi Becker, the show about pregnancy and babies, 101.9 megahertz of life. If you just joined me, you are on Bump and Beyond. I am your host, Yolandi Becker, and as always, we're talking the more or we're talking important parenting topics. And today's one is more important than most topics because we are talking saving children's lives and um, changing things. So if you've just joined me, I am talking to Renee Grunli. She is the mom of two. And she is the co-founder of the Car Seat Emporium. We'll talk a little bit more about that just now. But Renee, before we went um, to our ad break, 
um, with all those great specials from this game. I hope everyone is listening. Um, but before we got to that, you were mentioning some of the South African laws that uh, stipulate. But I mean, for me, it's very interesting. I don't know if it's a good thing that some of our laws are a little bit more lenient. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But yes, please add on to this. What are the laws of South Africa? What it stipulates regarding car seats? So I have actually covered the most of the important yes. stuff. Um, the, the thing is that, you know, even you don't really need a law to keep your child safe. That should yes. But that come, should come from within you as a parent. So by greatly exceeding your safety measurements, by following safest practice worldwide, you can't do any harm and you, you can get in no trouble by exceeding a law. So keep your child in a car seat until they are 1.5 meters tall and 12 years old. No. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> I, I wanted to also mention that um, this is a subcategory of the laws that I could mention. In South Africa, we use European regulations regarding car seats. And that means that for a seat to be legally sold in South Africa, it must have an orange sticker on it. It's the orange ECE sticker. It's a um, European safety standard. Um, it stands for Economic Commission for Europe. So all car seats in South Africa, that's legal must have that orange sticker on, which means any non-European car seat, such as American, Canadian, or Australian car seat, any car seat that does not have that orange sticker on, it's technically illegal to import, sell, and use in South Africa. And you can run into severe compatibility issues with our vehicles that we have in South Africa. For example, American car seats has um, were installed with um, a locking seat belt, which we, our vehicle models in South Africa do not work with locking seat belts. So you are not going to get a safe and secure installation necessarily if you use a car seat that does not conform with a EU certification. Oh my word, I'm like learning so much and I'm like, I'm actually just like thankful nothing happened because I'm pretty sure I had a can't remember the sticker per se, but I also didn't really look for it. But that brings me now because now you're saying, how am I now going to know if I'm getting the right? So I'm, do I have to look out for this orange sticker now that I know? But I mean, how, what types of seats? I mean, how how am I going to know which is the European brand, which is a US brand, and why the hell am I able to buy even a US brand in South Africa if it's yeah. not legal? All right, so that is where online shopping comes in. And if you have family, you can bring in seats. So unfortunately, technology also could be against us and parents are not aware of this. So um, it's also something that I would like to mention. If you travel overseas, always familiarize yourself with the car seat laws of the country you are visiting. Because if you take like your European car seat and you're traveling to America you and you are in a car crash, you could um, face that they do not, your um, travel insurance do not pay out. Oh. So you, yes, so it is definitely in South Africa, we get away with a lot of stuff. Um, so, but make sure if you travel overseas that you're up to date with the car seat laws of the country you're visiting. Okay, and that you yeah. have the right car seats. But then what should I then be considering when I'm buying like a car seat now, for instance, what should I look at? What are like the important, oh, all of the things, Not let's not just talk about the important things. What are the things we should be looking at? Because it's also not a cheap thing to buy, I feel. It's a very, ex and I felt like I was already looking at all the features and all those things because, yeah, it is not an easy or a cheap thing to buy. And now all of a sudden I'm like thinking my life has changed now. I should have thought of different things. <laughs> yes, so um, car seats are expensive. Depends on how you look at it. If you take the price and you divide it, uh, usually how long you can use it. It doesn't actually work out so expensive. There is actually prams that's twice the amount to pay the purchase price as some the one of the most expensive uh, car seats now in South Africa. So in South Africa, you're looking 
um, budget wise between about a thousand rand for a budget infant seat and the most expensive car seat currently goes for around 23,000 rand in South Africa. <laughs> so when you decide on a car seat budget, at, if you can first set your budget, that would significantly narrow down your search for a car seat. Then you also need to take into account your vehicle lifestyle, whether you're expecting a child with special needs, and then also other stuff such, such as after sale, sale service and availability of parts. So when it comes to a vehicle, not all car seats fit in all cars. What? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you, the most important thing is you always before your purchase, you go and physically fit the car seat in your vehicle and if it's like a multi-stage seat something such as a joey every stage i would like to mention this because a lot of people know about this seat it's a seat that can be used from birth till booster till about 12 years old you have to go and install that seat in all the different modes meaning rear facing forward facing and with a headrest in the highest setting to make sure that the seat is compatible in your vehicle in all the different modes because the vehicles have some sometimes fixed headrests that cannot be moved and then they it pushes the seat forward and then you can't get the correct installation and then you might actually find that only two or three years down the line when the headrest is starting to move up that the car seat actually doesn't fit in your vehicle so it's important to always physically fit it before you buy it um also are not you even allowed to do that is yes, that is they actually going to allow me to do that Yes, they actually should uh, tell you that they recommend you to do that, but most parents don't do that. And that is possibly one of the biggest mistakes that you make even before you start with the purchase of a car seat. You should always. Yeah, I'm learning a lot of every day. I'm just glad I'm done with that and I survived <laughs> it. And my kids survived it. <laughs> And then also a very interesting thing to take note of is that the seatbelt lengths in vehicles many times vary. You are not guaranteed that, for example, the left rear and the right rear seatbelts are the same length. So you must always fit the car seat to make sure that your vehicle seatbelt is long enough, specifically if it's a seatbelt installation car seat. Wow, it's so interesting. Uh, if you've just joined us, you are on 101.9 Chai FM, and this is Bump and Beyond. I am your host, Yolanda Becker, and today I'm speaking to Renee Groenlich, and we're talking about car seat safety. If you've missed it so far, you really need to go listen to this podcast later because it's really revolutionary. I'm like actually sitting here like thinking, how the hell did I not know all this stuff? Because it's so important. We're specifically talking about that not every car, a car seat fit, even though it's called a car seat, it's not called a Volkswagen seat or a Toyota seat. Apparently not every car seat fits in every vehicle. And there is some things you need to do specifically make sure when you're purchasing a car seat that it is fitting in your car at all the different phases of that car seat's lifespan. So... Wow, Renee, you're blowing my mind here. What are some other considerations we need to think about when purchasing a car seat? You should also take and consider your lifestyle. So if you are constantly on the road in and out of your vehicle, it might be um, beneficial to get like an Isofix car seat mm -hmm. and one that can rotate to the side for easy in and out. And it's easier also to get the harness, the correct tightness before you put your child back in. Uh, on this, I would like to mention some two very important points. Isofix, to just to refer to an Isofix car seat is wrong. There must always be three points of contact. So it's the designs currently is either Isofix and the top tether strap or Isofix and a support leg. It's like a leg that goes down on the floor. So more vehicle considerations again. You need Isofix anchorage points if you need we want to buy a car seat with Isofix and a top tether anchor 
if you need to, if you bypass it with a top tether anchor and just a solid floor without an underfloor storage compartment if you want to use the support leg design. Um, sure. And never and never confuse the top tether anchor with the cargo hooks in a vehicle. If you're unsure, actually, this is like the Bible of car seats. You always refer to the instruction manual of your car seat and your vehicle manual before you attempt to install your car seat. And very few parents do this. They don't even know what type of car seat, what brand of car seat they many times have. They don't know what is the max weight and height limits of their car seats and you should know that because otherwise if you don't know a certain term or what your car seat can and cannot do how do you know if you can install it correctly and use it correctly or even if your child is safe at all and here i'm thinking we're going to be talking about why car seats are important meanwhile we're talking about you need to have the right car seat and know your car seat like the back of your head. And it is such a, and I mean, it's not a difficult thing I feel to do, but luckily there are people like you to help inform us about this type of stuff because we can be quite lazy. But on the note now, I mean, the isofix, I mean, already that you're saying that that foot needs, there shouldn't be a compartment. I know my card has a compartment at the floor but I can't for the life of me remember on which side we put that. But anyway, luckily, I'm not going to overthink it now because I'm going to just be bad at it. Um, but on that mention with the ISOFIX, because I thought automatically because the ISOFIX was attached to the car, that it does make it safer. Is ISOFIX in fact safer? No, it's not. It reduces installation errors but do not completely eliminate it and one of the biggest things that me and my business partner is seeing is that most parents use only the isofix and not the third point of contact which basically would mean that your car seat will either go forward or to the side during a car crash it tips forward and your child's head is going to make contact with somewhere hot in the car with disastrous consequences. And this is specifically what we find in car seats that's marketed as 360 rotation car seats. People buy it because they think that they should be in all modes, be able to rotate the car seat 360 degrees without uninstalling the seat. And it's not true for most seats. The design uh -huh. doesn't allow it with a top tether strap. If you want to look at a car, um, a car seat that can do that, it would be better to, to look at one with a support leg design and not a top tether. So some of them can, but not all. And we have on our website, which is launching soon, we will have a complete and very detailed article on what exactly can and can't a car, 360 rotation car seats do. I mean, that's also, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I remember now, I know, I mean, I can't remember the brands and I, I'm also not going to name any because I can't for the life of me remember any of it. But I do remember like you go to these baby shows and then these people are showing you. And for me, often the message, also even with strollers, I always feel that the message that's sent is more about convenience, how it's easier to install it and take it out and those type of things. And for me now, the, the, the clear message that's coming across from you is the fact that you should be thinking about the safety of the seat, not of how long you can use it. I mean, those are great benefits, but you need to think of the, is it going to be then throughout the lifespan of that seat, be 100% safe for your child to be in and or the most safe for your child to be in? Um, because, I mean, just thinking about the isofix as well now, you know, you're not thinking, oh, your car, your child there now is attached to the car. So the impact that happens, obviously, your child's going to be like attached to that exceptional force, which is not necessarily the safest thing. But yeah, like I said, I'm being very much blown away at this point. Another thing that I'm wondering about, because my child herself, she hated that. Even though I uh, baby, not child, then she was a baby, hated the rear facing. 
Um, she hated not. I I assume not seeing. I don't know. I uh, babies can't see that far anyway. But she did not like being rear facing. How long should your child be in a rear facing child seat? At very least, according to the new regulations, to 15 months old. Thereafter, you yeah. may bring your child forward facing. But hold on for this. Worldwide. The safest practice is at the very least two years old and even longer if you can win it. There's car In a seat. Rear facing child seat. Yes. It, but it how protects- is it, your child is gonna my children, their legs would not fit that long to rear facing. They are extremely flexible. Just look at how your children play around at that age. They are very flexible. And they don't have problems. They they cross their legs. They put it up. The legs are an issue for us as adults, not for the kids. And um, there's car seat that, well, the majority of car seats available in South Africa can either go to 13 kilos or 18 kilos rear facing. 13 kilos is an average two-year-old and 18 kilograms is an a- a- average four-year-old. So that's another thing. Max out your car seat limits. There's a reason why your car seat can do certain things and have certain weight or height limits. So if you have a car seat that can rear face till 18 kilograms, try to reach that before you turn to forward facing. Again, I'm a little bit grateful that I don't have to deal with this <laughs> uh, and that nothing has happened. But I mean, how that is like so interesting. But now, um, what do you say? Because like I said, I'm like ticking your list here of the mistakes I've made. But what is like some of the common, let's get to that after the ad break, because I feel like this is going to be a long list. <laughs> this is Bump and Beyond with Yolandi Becker, the show about pregnancy and babies. 101.9 megahertz of life. If you have just joined me, you are on 101.9 High FM. I am Yulandi Becker, your host of Bump and Beyond. And as always, we're talking parenting very slowly, but surely, or fastly and surely, the rather, we are running out of time as always. Um, uh, and today specifically, I'm speaking to Renee Grunlich, and we're talking about car seat safety. And to be honest, before we went to the ad break, I was mentioning that um, I'm ticking off a lot of mistakes that I made as a parent. And again, I feel like I'm uh, overly informed and I'm married to a German for goodness sake. My husband was also full of things that we had to look for with these car seats. Yet, I feel like we've made some mistakes along the way. Luckily, nothing happened. Thank goodness. But yes, that's not the reality. Renee, what is some of the most common mistakes that you find that parents make when it comes to car seats? I would like to be, just before I answer that, just make a statement here that parents should really think very closely about this. A car seat is the only item that you will ever buy for your child that has the ability to save your child's life if it is installed and used correctly. So this comes now with installation and use mistakes. Your child's life is most likely going to depend on how you, the parent, installed and used the car seat. So it's a huge responsibility and a responsibility that many parents, sadly, doesn't take very seriously. Seriously. (laughs) So it's a little bit of a wake-up call that I would like to mention that about 9 out of 10 car seats are so poorly installed and used that if you are in a car accident, your child would most likely be killed or have severe injuries, like critical injuries that they are severely disabled for the rest of their lives. And that's it's all all because of installation and use errors. So, so with installation errors, it's the isofix car seats that parents don't use that third point of contact. With seatbelt installations, very often, actually most car seats, they don't follow the correct routing and do the correct uh, tightness. They they don't pull the seatbelt tight at all. 
So always refer to your instruction manual about what is the correct routing. The moment that you start thinking like this looks right, oh, I guess this is right. The moment that you start with that, you should know you are on the wrong way. Stop, refer to the instruction manual. That's where you always go back to if you're unsure. And then with use, one of the biggest mistakes is harnesses that's too loose. A harness should fit comfortably tight and it should pass the pinch test once you've tightened the harness. That is when you, the, if you take the harness, that's the black webbing at the shoulder of your child, you have to try to pinch together that material. If you can, it's too loose. If it keeps on slipping between your fingers, it's tight enough. Because remember, the harness is designed to stretch during an accident. So it has to be, you have to, your start has to be correct. It has to be tight enough, comfortably tight. And then should you be in an unfortunate accident, it will then do its job by stretching and that absorbs energy. But if it's too loose to start with and already falling off the shoulders, your child is going to be ejected from the car seat. Not necessarily out of the vehicle on the top, but the moment that your child's bo upper body leaves the car seat, when the harness slips off the shoulder, that is in car seat terms, they are ejected from the car seat. And then the car seat is not going to have any effect at all. So it doesn't help to say then, but my child was in a car seat. The car seat can't do its job if it's not used correctly. And another big thing that I also see very regularly is parents put the shoulder straps behind the children's back. They just buckle up, the, it's just the buckle that they fasten, and then they put the shoulder straps behind the back. There's videos out there, and we're going to insert a link of a video like that in on our website on, on the correct installation and use articles. And then you are going to see the shocking footage of what will happen if your harness either slips off or is from the start behind the back. And then also another thing is headrest that's either too low or too high. A general rule of thumb is that you should be able to insert two fingers between the top of your child's shoulders and the bottom of the headrest. So the ears should usually be inside the headrest. It should not hang out under the headrest. Then the headrest is too high and can't protect your child's head. And then also harness height. That is at the slots at the back of the seat where the harness comes over your child's shoulders, that is critical to be the correct height. For rear facing, that is looking to the back of the vehicle, it should be either level with the shoulders or maximum one inch, which is two and a half centimeters below the shoulders. Mm -hmm. If it's lower than that, it's too low. And for forward facing, the lowest it may be is level with the shoulders or two and a half centimeters above the shoulders. So for forward facing, if it's higher than two and a half centimeters or the moment it drops down below the shoulders, it's too high or too low. And it has a, a negative impact on the safety that the harness can provide for your child. They would like for, uh, for forward facing specifically, if the harness is too low, your child will suffer from uh, compression injuries. So they won't go forward so much. They get pushed down into the seat. So the whole spine oh. is like this. And then if it's too high, the child will travel too far forward. And that acceleration, everything will um, cause more injuries. Um, and I would say the last most common mistake that parents make is they put their children in the wrong car seats for their weight and height or average age so and they move them up too quickly to the next size seat no. so the moment that they reach the minimum weight and height limits for the next size seat they move them up please don't do that you're compromising your child's safety as far as you can max out your car seat limits so use it until the maximum height and weight before you turn to forward facing or before you start to use it in booster mode. I mean, this, Renee, I mean, if you've just joined this conversation, please, you need to go listen to this podcast. I've learned so much today about car seats and how 
simple things I feel if we're just informed about doing this in the right way that it can make a huge difference obviously we're talking here about something that we don't want to happen but if it happens and it's not always our fault there's horrible drivers in South Africa and we need to be be prepared for when those things happen and we can make a huge difference Renai, like I said, we are running out of time, but I would like you to just mention a little bit, what does the Car Seat Emporium, then what do you guys do? <laughs> okay, we are certified European Car Seat Technicians, so we are trained and certified to work on all European car seats to assist you with correct installation and correct use. So even I've also done a course with special needs, transporting special needs children, so if anyone needs any information on how do you choose a car seat, what should you be looking out for, they could contact us and we could help them with correct installation, use and choices. Oh, yes. And just like that, we are running out of time. But let's talk a little bit more after the ad break. <laughs> this is Bump and Beyond with Yolandi Becker. The show about pregnancy and babies, 101.9 megahertz of life. If you've just joined me, this is Bump and Beyond. I'm your host, Yunani Becker, and I've been talking baby car seats, and oh, child car seats, not even just baby. I've like, yeah, Renee Grunling, my uh, guests have really enlightened me today about what car seat safety should be about and it was really lovely to talk to you if you've missed this podcast please you need to go listen to it on hivem.com afterwards it is really so important to know all the mistakes that we make as parents when it co comes to such an important topic of car seat safety so please go have a look at it um, on hivem.com and of course there's also all sorts of other podcasts that we've topics that we've dis, um, discussed in the past that you can go listen to and not just on my show on all the other shows on Hive M. Renee it was an absolute pleasure to have um, you on the show please just as a last note can you tell the listeners um, where they can reach you what is your website what is your Facebook so that they can get into contact and know where to get all this information from <laughs> yes sure so our Facebook page is the Car Seat Emporium and we also have a Facebook group called the Car Seat Safety, Car Seat Safety South Africa. It's a private group where you can join and ask all your questions for free advice from us. And then we, our email address is info at carseatsafety.co.za. And our website is www.carseatsafety.co.za. It's currently under construction. It will launch hopefully in like about a week holding sums <laughs> there's an enormous amount of work that goes in gail and i has to provide all the content we can't get anyone to do it on our behalf so it's a huge job so we are uh, working and then yeah, after today's that. conversation i uh, i mean i first thought when you were telling me about this i was like oh yeah that's a little bit we didn't even get remote into all of the topics that we wanted to discuss so we might have to i mean september is still a long month so maybe we yeah. have to schedule <laughs> another one for the safety awareness month because it has been so wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining me. And to all of you out there, um, join me next week as I chat to Dr. Adal Ru about food allergies and asthma and eczema. There is nothing more precious to a parent than a child and nothing more important for our future than the safety of our children. The world is changed by our example, not by our opinion. Let's lead by example for our children. Thank you for joining me today. Until next time, enjoy your day. Bye.